Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, so so simple. Oh gosh. Watch this. Oh. You went at that one a little harder, didn't you? Sure. Look. What did you do to hit that ball the extra 20 yards? Tur turn my body. Turn my shoulders and my body. Here, here's again. Look at Look up here. Always going at my target. Watch. See the red stripe in the middle of the ball. Oh, sure. Look. Sure. So simple. Oh. So simple. Always at my target. Well, you were saying before something that practice doesn't make perfect. No. But on the other hand, you developed your system, your method, by hitting 800 balls a day, which is a lot of practice. No, I can't. that's the hard way. I still didn't become perfect. <laughs> I still didn't become perfect. No. What's the good of practice then? What should people be doing? Just practicing their position and their move. That's all. Don't worry about results. But just practice, making sure you get the move you want to get that suits your makeup. I always find it pretty interesting when Mo is asked, should, should you learn his golf swing? And a lot of times he would say, no, you shouldn't learn his swing because he knew that it was a radically different approach to hitting a golf ball and that it would confuse people. So he'd almost say, no, don't try it. I'm the only one that really can do this because it is so different than what, what other people do. But then there was times when he would say that everybody should do it. It's so simple. So he kind of contradicted himself. But one of the things, as you saw in that video, he was asked that if, if somebody was going to learn to swing, how would you learn it, right? And he says, hit your positions. You got to hit your positions. So today I want to walk you through the positions of the single plane swing and, and the, basically the checkpoints in this video series. These are the checkpoints that I look for when I videotape or I look for or train my golf swing. Now, here's the thing about getting into the positions of the swing that once again, the golf swing is a sum of its parts. In other words, the backswing affects the downswing or the downswing affects your transition and all those things. So how, all this stuff needs to work together. That's why it's, it's not a quick fix approach. It's a system of, of playing golf. So I want to teach you through the positions of the swing, walk you through what I look for. And today in this video, I'm just going to go through the backswing because there's a lot to go through and I don't want to confuse you with too much stuff, but let's just master the backswing motion and get on a great plane position at the top of the swing. So remember in the first video, we mastered the address. So we have to have that right. I'll do a quick review on that. And then we'll go into the backswing position here. So here we go at address. So I'm going to go ahead and set up and you can see that I've created that nice alignment of the lead arm and down the line, I got that nice alignment of the trail arm. So I'm getting that perfect address position. Now keep in mind, I had a few questions from that last video on this. People are asking, what are these training aids? Look, one of the most important things you can do when you practice, if you come to our schools, you come to the academy, I am going to make sure that when you practice that you get feedback. What do I mean by feedback? Well, feedback is making sure, because here's the thing, what, it, what if I ask you this question, when you practice, do you absolutely know 100% that you are practicing correctly? And I haven't had anybody really know that until they start using video or training aids, knowing, yeah, if I hold this training aid and I have this alignment trainer which teaches you ball position and stance position, and I have these products around, or I have a coach in front of me, or I have a video that I'm practicing perfectly. That was a big part of speeding up the learning process here, is to make sure you get some type of feedback that you are practicing correctly. So I always keep that in mind. That's why you see me with these, with these devices and these training aids. They're method specific. These are built for the single plane swing. So I have built products specifically to teach you what I teach. Uh, you can't find these, this stuff anywhere else. So that's what I built it for. Now, Let's go into the address again and we'll go right into the backswing here. 
Now, I think that once you master the address and you get this down, that the backswing actually is pretty easy because the backswing moves to position one just through a rotation around the trail leg. Now, that's just a rotation as I stay in my tilted position. Notice that, that my tilt position maintains as I go to that position one. And you, you're going to see kind of an extension there of the arms, and you see me pivoting around that trail leg, all the pressure on the inside of the leg. Now, believe it or not, here's why this is such an important movement. A lot of people take this movement for granted. But this is such an important movement. Why? Because two-thirds of the backswing rotation, two-thirds of the movement of your torso and pelvis, two-thirds occurs in that motion right there. So a majority of the backswing is happening in that point. And I'll, I'll go through that one more time. So this is a very important movement because two-thirds of the motion goes to here. And then now from here, there's very little pelvis movement. Mostly this is arms and hands and a little bit of right arm and right shoulder. The left shoulder doesn't move very much. See that from there? There's not a lot of movement. It's mostly right arm and right shoulder up to the top. So you get two-thirds of the movement. There's that extension. And then you go to the top of the backswing, and you're able to stay in your tilt. And now you're in a perfect plane position. But I'll show you that from down the line. So keep in mind that that first movement's critical. Let me give you a quick tip here on how to accomplish that first movement, which is kind of interesting. You know, we have our single plane trainer, which I'll show you a little bit later, but I got a way to do it without the single plane trainer that I want to show you first, because you probably don't have one right now. If you don't have one, here's a quick, here's a quick way to learn this. So grab, grab your club, all right? So you're in your address, right? Grab your club and bring it up and just put it against your pivot point. This is not your belly button. It's in front of the belly button. It's above your hip right here. So there's, there's, there's your pivot point right there, okay? So and I want you to hold it there, and I want you to go ahead and place your hands on the club. So you've created the same alignment, but, you, but you're just taking the club off the ground and you're holding it against the pivot point. Now what I want you to do is while you're tilted, so nothing looks different there except my club's off the ground, I'm turning, there's, and now, now notice what happens here. When I turn, okay, it's still against my pivot point, correct? So I'm turning and it's staying against the pivot point. But here's, what inter here's what's interesting about that. It's, it's staying spatially the same space from my body. That's what's so important about that. So it's not this. You didn't pull it in like that. You didn't lift it up like this. You went like this. You simply just turned. That's why people say it's a one-piece takeaway. Well, it's everything sequencing itself together, referencing that point of the body. That's why I call it a club-to-body relationship. So here you go, there's that first movement. Now watch the second movement from here. It's mostly just arms and hands and leveraging the club up. See that? There's that second movement to the top. So you can literally train your golf swing and reference the spatial relationship of the golf club, which is a critical element here. Go down the line and I'll show you this. Now that spatial thing that I'm talking about, let's, let's, let's talk about that for just a second. Why was Mo such a great ball striker and why is the single plane swing a better and easier approach to getting to impact and it's because of this thing I call the spatial relationship you know Mo stood further from the golf ball we all see that we all know that but what he did was he put himself in a plane in the plane position which allowed him to return to the same spatial relationship at impact if you're returning the club shaft to the same spatial relationship you can get to the same spot every time, you can be more consistent. That's the opposite of what conventional golf teaches. And I'm, I'm gonna kind of regress a little bit here because this is 2020 and I want you to, this is the second video for the year and I want you to understand this, is that, is that the conventional golf swing has a fundamental problem at the address. It's a spatial problem. We call it two planes because the arms are hanging straight down and the golfer is too close to the ball. So in order to hit it, he's got to create space. He's got to go up. He's got to lift his body to allow for that shaft to lift, right? So he's accommodating a spatial problem. That's really what's happening there. The two planes creates an angle, a spatial problem. He's got to somehow correct for that. You'll see players like Laura Davies, both feet off the ground. Mark O'Meara, both feet off the ground. You'll see some players like Lee Westwood. The arms will bend going into impact. You know, every, every player, most players lift and straighten the leg. Most people lift and straighten the leg. So you're seeing a lot of different accommodations for that major flaw at address. So that's why this is a, the goal is simplifying how we do this. So let's do this again from the down the line view. All right, so we have my perfect single plane address. 
Now, from here, watch this. I'm just going to turn into that position one. There's extension position one. There's, that's basically going to that position one. Then I'm going to go to the top position two. And you'll notice I'm right on plane there at the top of the backswing. So, so it goes in inward motion. That's a, that's a, and I, I'm going to say inward, but I'm going to show you here in a second what that means. So the club goes in. And then there's that second movement to the top. Now I'm going to do it with one, one motion, which looks like one motion. And then I have a perfectly planed top of the backswing. Now let's do that same little experiment here where I took the club, put it into my pivot point, put it down towards the plane there. It's the same alignment. There we go. See how the spatial relationship stays the same? And then to the top, I'm hitting the same position at the top. So that's a little experiment for you to teach you the spatial relationship of club to body, which teaches you the natural motion of the club going in and to the top. And notice how the club moves to the inside in that motion. It's a natural motion. If you put the club against the pivot point and you simply turn, that's the path the club should go on. So you're not trying to do that. It simply goes there from proper address and proper rotation. So that's the lesson for today. Backswing, spatial relationship, getting the club on plane. And I look forward to seeing you in video three of this series.